if you look into, your, into that booklet, it talks about the tools that you would need to do irrigation at its most basic. It's one of those trades that you can really set yourself up quite um, inexpensively just by having something to cut pipe with and something to close clamps with if you're just doing residential uh, drip or pop-up sprinkler systems. These are a, a cutter that you've probably all seen that most irrigation shops stock and we stock. I like these cutters, I prefer to use these over secateurs, they give a cleaner cut. These cutters will also cut PVC pipe and little tree branches and cable. So if I was installing, I'd be cutting my cable with this as much as it probably destroys the blades. We've had the same cutters at Waterpro at Kent Town for the whole time we've been there and you can just replace the blade. So you can set yourself up pretty inexpensively. Uh, obviously you probably have all these tools already and then you won't need a drill bit like that in your drill for irrigation, but having a drill to be able to mount irrigation controllers or to uh, tr troubleshoot solenoid valves will be beneficial. And then one of the other tools that I'd recommend you have is some kind of wire stripper if you're gonna be wiring up solenoid valves. Uh, some would argue that you don't need to strip wires when you're using these because they've got metal inside them that's designed to pierce the wire. I find that it doesn't always work. Um, so if you are using wire joiners like these, just make sure that there's no metal actually coming outside of the gel and then your wire joiners will be waterproof and, and safe. Uh, this, the licensing side of things with irrigation is probably something that's become more prevalent now with um, associations like the Master Landscapers Association and the Irrigation Association getting out there and actively lobbying for trades to be licensed and for um, unlicensed trades to be chased and prosecuted. So I just put that in there just to make sure that you're aware that there will be licensing uh, requirements, especially, well definitely for the landscaping side of things, but then there are some licensing requirements if you're doing main, mains water irrigation connections and master valves. So I, I'm pretty sure uh, from an irrigation standpoint everything after a master valve you don't need a license to do for anything under 25 mil. so if you're doing residential stuff you're fine, obviously what you guys are doing on a golf course, if you're doing work on kind of 80 mil main lines or 100 mil main lines, it's very likely that you need an irrigation license to be doing it. Obviously that's something for your superiors to, to deal with. Uh, there's a guy that I did a podcast with recently called Sam Cattell, who is um, SA Trade Licensing. If anyone does need any help, I don't have any financial affiliation with him, he's just a good dude. Um, he helps people get their builders licenses. He used to work for the Office of Consumer and Business Affairs and he now has a business where he'll help you get your builder's license. Um, he'll do a mock interview with you, help you fill out your paperwork and get you ready for an interview. Obviously that gives you that kind of more comfortable smooth transition to going into your interview and hopefully getting your license. 